So, many talented people have analyzed the world maps of Soulsborne games and I've been waiting for years for someone to do the same for Sekiro and at some point I got tired of waiting and I thought maybe I can do it? How hard can it be anyway? <laughs> oh boy. I will be using DS Map Studio to fly around the map files from the game and show how the different sections link to each other and there are going to be some surprises along the way. The game world is separated into 9 maps and 7 of these forms a seamless interconnected map that we're going to explore. So let's skip the intro part of the game and start with the Ashina outskirts. From this beautiful vista on Ashina Castle, we can already see a lot of landmarks that we're going to encounter later in the game. Here is the castle itself, just beneath is the Castle Gate Fortress area, where we will fight Jiobu Oniwa, and the ravine just below us is the Underbridge Valley, where we will meet the giant serpent. By getting closer, we can see the cavern where the serpent is going to come out from. Far in the distance, we can barely make out a broken bridge. It's the far side of the bridge leading out from the silver grass field where we fought Genichiro in the Ashina Reservoir. Speaking of broken bridges, I did wonder if these two bridges, the one leading outside of the dilapidated temple and the one next to the idol, used to actually lead somewhere in the game. So I went and checked the map on the ES Map Studio and I found out that they don't lead anywhere and their only purpose is to make the area more believable. And have you noticed, they show up on the antique map as well. By the way, the castle we see from here is pretty much the real thing regarding position and distance. The only difference is that in the outskirts map they've made it slightly taller, probably to make it appear more impressive. This is the first of many instances in the game where we can see that, while trying to keep spatial relationships grossly accurate, the developers are not afraid to deviate when justified by style and aesthetics. Back to the outskirts entrance, on the right hand side is the imposing Fountainhead spiral, clearly inspired by Mount Fuji, and straight ahead we can already spot the area filled with enemies that is home to General Tenzen Yamauchi. From here, let's skip ahead, past the Chained Ogre and right into the area where we fight the General. He is guarding this beautiful map of the Ashina Castle area and, I'll be honest, I never noticed this map before researching this video as I found that the map usually gets destroyed during the messy confrontation with the enemies in the area. An identical map can be found inside the castle but the Samurai appears to be using this one to discuss war plans as they use ghost stones to highlight places where checkpoints, generals and soldiers are found. Back to General Yamauchi's area, proceeding to the right towards the shrine gives us a peek at this outcrop, which also appears in its correct position on the antique map. The area is going to be accessible only later in the game, after the castle and the great serpent shrine, and despite what the game says, it's loaded as part of the Sunken Valley map. And by the way, I love the little fake out that the developers did here. The area is hidden and finding it rewards you with a prayer bid, so that's exploration done, right? Wrong? You can come back here after acquiring the Mibu breathing technique and find yet another secret. The second notable feature of the area is the cave with another headless. An exit on the right side opens a shortcut and a way back to the outskirts, but in the cave is also a shinobi door. Somehow the door leads to the demon bell on Mount Congo. We still haven't seen Mount Congo by this point in the game, but this door works on shinobi magic or something. The Senpo temple is very far away, on the other side of the map. There is sort of an explanation for this. There is a circle of mysterious symbols in front of this door, not present in front of other normal doors. The only other magic shinobi door in the game, which is similarly marked, is the one leading from Kuro's room at the top of Ashina Castle all the way back to the dilapidated temple. I find this door is a bit pointless as we have the idle travel system 
and I wonder if the existence of this shortcut means that at some point in development fast travel wasn't included in the game. Anyway, the shinobi door is closed at this point in the game, and this bridge leading to the castle has been destroyed as well, which forces us to make our way through the valley underneath it. This particular bridge, though, is going to be rebuilt by the invading forces during the final assault on Ashin. So, we pass through the valley, beat Jiobu Niwa, open the main gate, and start our final approach to Ashina Castle. I would like to spend a few words on how well designed Ashina Castle is from an historical point of view. The only way to the main keep is this winding path full of gates, and it's not only a gameplay choice. That is how Japanese castles were built in the Sengoku period in which the game is set. I could go on forever about how much care has gone into designing Ashina Castle, however, this topic probably deserves its own video. Along the way, this conveniently placed torn down wall seems placed on purpose to show us a first distant glimpse of Senpo Temple, easily recognizable by its red autumn leaves, and a better look at the silver grass field where we lost Genichiro. I wonder, by the way, if Wolf's left arm is still in there somewhere. Anyway, let's enter the castle, and I'm going to use General Tenzin's map to show the layout. The castle gate, guarded by the Blazing Bull, is to the north. This is the first and last time we'll be using the gate, as it's going to be closed for the rest of the game. On the east side is the entrance to the abandoned dungeon and the Ashina Reservoir. To the south, in the rear of the castle, is the pond with a headless and the road leading to the Great Serpent Shrine and the entrance to the Sunken Valley. To the west is the Old Grave Idol and the road joining back with the outskirts through the Broken Bridge. From the antechamber area, we can drop down and open the front door, creating a shortcut to the rear of the castle. Now, let's go to the top of the castle. We want to find out how well the panorama that we see matches the reality of the game. Once again, I'm going to use a map. Here, we are on top of the watchtower where Ishin is resting, and basically all of the game up until now is faithfully represented. Here is the broken bridge close to the first idol, and behind it we can see the top of the bamboo plants that surround the dilapidated temple. We can follow all of the outskirts. Here's General Tenzin's area, the shrine leading to the Sempo Temple shortcut, and even the underbridge Valley Idol is visible. From here, we can see the area where we fought Jiobu Oniwa and the Castle Gate path. Moving to the east side, we can clearly see the Sempo Temple in the distance. And to the south is the Fountainhead Spiral and the very first bit of the Sunken Valley. What about the rest of the Sunken Valley and the Mibu Village? They are open areas, so we should be able to see them from up here, right? Well, here's the thing. We can load all the relevant maps together and we can find out where the two locations are supposed to be. But when we go and look in that direction in the game, we only see a big depression covered by fog. So, the game is kind of cheating about the Sunken Valley by not showing geometry of the map that should be visible from the castle. And as for the Mibu village, it's simply too low and far away, and the view is covered by the fog anyway. This is probably the biggest mismatch in map positioning that I found in the game. To have a better idea of how it looks like, we can take a look at the panorama from the Ashina Reservoir. From the top of the Moon Tower, where Kuro is being held at the start of the game, we should be able to see quite an interesting landscape. The Senpo Temple should be visible in the distance, as the outside of the abandoned dungeon and the bottomless hole, respectively. The Sunken Valley and the entrance to the Gun Fort should also be visible. Sadly, none of that is reflected in-game, as the relevant maps are not loaded in. Possibly there was a conscious choice to not obstruct the landscape. You might have noticed by now that I still haven't mentioned two areas, 
the Hirata estate and the Fountainhead Palace. We reach these areas by warping, so there's not much we can say about their connection to the main map. The Hirata estate, in particular, is placed far away from Ashina Castle in both space and time. As for the Fountainhead Palace, we are at least shown where it's supposed to be, but none of the actual palace is visible from here. So, with that we got the lay of the land. Let's start exploring those maps, starting with the Sempo Temple. Mount Congo looks quite distant, but it doesn't really take too long to get there, following the underground waterway. And that's because the temple we see from the Ashina castle is a fake. Basically, its distance is a bit exaggerated. We can start from the castle and fly all the way to the temple on the S-Map Studio. And what happens now if we load the proper Sempo Temple map? We find that the real temple, the one that we get to explore in the game, is actually much closer. Interestingly, we can also see Ashina Castle from the temple, but in this case its position and distance are perfectly accurate. Or, in other words, that's exactly how much you had to travel to get to the temple. We can also see the Fountainhead Spiral from here, but it looks kind of different, doesn't it? It's because it's actually a different model, which is closer and also much smaller compared to the one we can see from Ashina Castle. Apart from the clouds, it's a completely different mountain. One of the unexpected connections on the map is how Mount Congo joins the Sunken Valley through the cavern used to heal the giant serpent. It's unexpected because, starting from Ashina Castle, the way to Mount Congo and the entrance to the Sunken Valley are in completely opposite directions. But we can follow the map and find out that they end up being right next to each other. Here is the bridge just past the Gun Fort, and we can just fly up and see the temple. From the Guardian Apes watering hole, we can actually see the cavern connecting to Sempo Temple. And it shows up on the travel map as well. Speaking of the map, have you noticed this big bridge? It's this one, which must have been the main bridge leading to the temple possibly broken by the monks themselves. Also, if you're wondering where the illusory hole fits in all of this, the developers put it all the way down at the bottom of the map. Let's talk now about the abandoned dungeon and how it links with the sunken valley, and it's probably my favorite piece of unexpected map connection in the entire game. There are two entrances to the abandoned dungeon, the one through the Taro Troop, armed with a bell, which leads to the underground waterway and eventually to Mount Congo, and the one in the reservoir, where we started the game, which leads straight to the bottomless hole. Let's have a look from above. Joining the two paths in the middle is the big cavern with a Shichimen warrior. And finally, taking the plunge through the bottomless hole leads us to the Ashina Depths. Now, have you ever wondered why there are gunners from the Sunken Valley here? Well, it's because the Ashina Depths are directly below the Gun Fort in the Sunken Valley. This also explains why the Buddhist statues can be found here, as they probably originate from the valley above. We can look up from the depths and see that it's not a cavern, is the bottom of a valley, and that above is the sunken valley sky. The game hides this passage with fog, but right here is a hole shooting straight from the gun fort all the way down to the poison pool in the depths. Sadly, there is no legitimate way to just jump down there from above without dying. So, the sunken valley clan people are in the depths because the depths are the sunken valley, and the two snake eyes mini bosses are actually really close to each other, separated only by a 150 meters vertical drop. 
The close proximity of the two areas is also made clear when we find the Great Serpent Cave at the bottom of Bodhisattva Valley in the Sunken Valley. If we manage to make it all the way to the end of the cave, behind the serpent we find a passage that leads us back all the way to the Poison Pool. There's no smoke and mirrors at play here, unlike in the false Sempo Temple case. And it's just really cool seeing how two areas starting so far apart can come back together in such an unexpected way. Now, from here, we can make our way to the next location, Mibu Village. The poison pool leads to the hidden forest, and as we've seen, the pool lies just under the sunken valley. This means that the hidden forest and the sunken valley are not far from each other, but we can't see the forest from the valley because we are inside the valley. However, just past the Riven Cave Idol, at the entrance of the Bodhisattva Valley, there is an opening in the mountain, and we can see some grey fog in the low distance. That's where Mibu Village is located. And guess what? This opening shows up on the antique map as well. It's interesting how, despite not being able to see the village from here in the game, the map correctly shows that this cave is overlooking the village. Anyway, the rest of the village has a relatively linear layout that leads far away from the rest of the map. This fact, together with the low elevation and the oppressing dark sky, means that no other locations in the game are visible from the Mibu village. Sad. Fun fact though, it's always night time in Mibu village. You know how the time of the day progresses through the game, starting in the morning and proceeding to midday, afternoon and night? Of course, it's always night in the Hirata estate, because it's a memory, and in the Fountainhead palace, because beating the corrupted monk guarding the palace is what triggers the night to fall. But you can get to Mibu at any point during the day cycle and the moon will always be shining in the sky. The midday moon looks almost like a sun because of some light diffraction effect going on in the sky, but it's definitely still the moon. Anyway, this perspective from the sunken valley helps in showing that Mibu village is at a really low elevation, especially when compared to the Ashina castle area. In fact, the bottom of the village pond, with the creepy half-buried bodies, is the lowest point we can reach in the map if we exclude weird outliers as the illusory hole. We can use the giant serpent model as a ruler and find out that Mibu village is pretty much exactly one snake length lower than the top of Ashina castle. For reference, the giant serpent has been measured by data miner Zulid Witch as being around 465 meters long. Next, Let's go all the way up to our final destination, Fountainhead Palace. It's quite cool how we ascend from Mibu Village, the lowest elevation point in the game, all the way up to the palace, which has arguably the highest elevation in the game. Well, if we want to be accurate, the arena where we face the Divine Dragon is positioned above the palace in the map files, so maybe that one counts as the highest place? It definitely feels like it, from a symbolic point of view as well. That said, there's not much to say here regarding connections to the overworld, as the map for the palace does not connect in any way to the rest of the game map. The only way to get there is by riding the giant rope doll. Judging by the cutscene, it looks like a very short ride, implying that the palace is not distant from the Mibu village. But once we arrive, there are no landmarks visible around us. It is just by following the in-game lore and the map that we know that we are supposed to be inside the Fountainhead Spiral. What about implied connections to the overworld, then? We know that the rejuvenating waters, originating from the Divine Dragon, flow to the Sunken Valley. We can find some washed-up palace buildings there, and later the corpse of the Great Carp, if we choose to kill it. But also, if we look around the area where the doll picked us up, there's three smaller waterfalls ending in this area where the Mibu village is supposed to be. It's possible that these side streams are the origin of the river that flows through Mibu village. The river ends underground just behind the Mibu village idol, 
and its final location is quite close to the Guardian Ape's burrow, where we fight the ape for the second time. Water comes in here flowing through the rocks, and so I believe that the ape is suiting its wounds in rejuvenating water coming from the Mibu village. And finally, despite what I said earlier, turns out that there is a way to get to the palace without needing to bother our big rope friend. It involves a glitch known as air swimming, where we get out of bounds and trigger Wolf's swimming state. Using this glitch, players have been able to travel from the Mibu village all the way to the palace, just by swimming around and upwards, showing that the map is connected in a certain roundabout way. So, there's definitely been an extraordinary amount of care put into crafting the game world of Sekiro. Even where inaccuracies are present, I definitely got a sense that they are more stylistic choice than oversights, and the final result speaks for itself, the game is absolutely gorgeous and brimming with style. Recording this video required a lot of work, but I also had a lot of fun trying my hand at this, so I really hope you enjoyed it. I've put links in the description for the references I've used and for the people who helped me along the way. And please do let me know in the comments if you have any questions, corrections or if there's more that you would like to see. Bye bye!